Hello and welcome to this Merry Live special. This is Dr. Mark Miravalli. My friends, over the recent times, there's been a lot of news articles, including what has to be called fake news regarding the Lady of All Nations apparitions, and at least by consequence, the movement for the Fifth Marian Dogma. I'm always delighted at these opportunities because it always indicates both sometimes uh, attack from the adversary, but, but also in a very positive dimension, a new clarity, a new understanding, and therefore a new appreciation and love for the apparitions of the Lady of All Nations, and also the importance of a solemn papal definition of Our Lady's role as the spiritual mother of all peoples, under its three essential aspects of co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate. Let's begin by identifying the fake news. And I, I ask you to bear with me because I, I want to give you the clear facts regarding the issue. So I'm going to get into a little detail, but it's a detail that uh, God willing will serve you to understand exactly the status of the Lady of All Nations uh, apparitions in the church and also the importance of one confirmation that comes out of those messages, and that is the imperative for a proclamation of a fifth Marian dogma. So let's start with the fake news. Unfortunately, an Italian blogger put on headlines such as, quote, the Amsterdam apparitions are false, and, quote, the Holy See has formally condemned the Amsterdam apparitions. I'm happy to report that those are simply fake news headlines. They have no basis in reality, in truth. Uh, where did they come from? Well, an Italian blogger uh, made these references and unfortunately was picked up by a European uh, Alatea Catholic news service. And unfortunately, they were promulgated throughout the world. What is the truth? What is the fact? And, and why would this come up now? Well, recently, a nuncio in Lebanon was asked for a clarification regarding devotion to the Lady of All Nations by a cardinal who, in point of fact, has a beautiful devotion to the Lady of All Nations. Well, in the response letter from the nuncio, again, a private letter from the nuncio to the patriarch, he consulted with the congregation, someone in the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith, the Vatican Commission. And so in his letter, he says that the Vatican Congregation refers back to a 1974 statement. Now, nothing new here, my friends. That statement has been on the Vatican website for as long as the Vatican website has been a Vatican website. Uh, nothing new here. What is the 1974 statement? Well, the Vatican at that time confirmed the statement of the local bishop, who in 1956 came to a non constat de supernaturalitate conclusion. What does that mean? It means that the supernatural character could not yet be established. It does not mean, and hence the fake news, it does not mean that the apparitions have been condemned. That would be a constat de non supernaturalitate conclusion. Fortunately, the 1974 uh, declaration, the, the, the statement on the website, is very clear that it's non constat which would be the same category that we would put Medjugorje in today, for example. The 1974 statement was only confirming the statement of the local bishop. Now, the statement also speaks about a prohibition of devotion at that time based on that non constat position. Now, there are two important developments that have happened realizing, again, this is almost 50 years ago, there's two important developments that have happened since 1974 regarding uh, the Lady of All Nations apparitions. Let's first talk about the prohibition of public veneration. Well, in point of fact, since 1974, 
the Vatican Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith has had a positive modification in its position as expressed in a number of specific events. For example, in 1984, the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith writes to the Diocese of Harlem, Amsterdam, in which the apparitions had taken place, and talks about its new openness to the possibility of a uh, declaration of public veneration. Now keep in mind, that it's the Vatican that instructs the local bishop that he is the first person to make this discernment and to make this judgment. So it's not like the local bishop is doing something contrary to the Vatican when he does his job, which is to make the first discernment and consequent judgment regarding the apparitions. Then also in 1995, at that time, Auxiliary Bishop Punt, the Auxiliary Bishop from Amsterdam, has a meeting with Cardinal Ratzinger where Cardinal Ratzinger directly confirms the legitimacy of a local bishop declaration which would allow public veneration. Then in 1996, the ordinary bishop, Bishop Bomers, in fact makes that approval of public veneration, the permission for public veneration, and leaves the issue of authenticity open for further possible developments. It's also very important to note that during that time, again, you're talking about 50 years almost between 1974 and the present, and, and hence understanding that the 1974 statement is not complete in terms of the history and this development, you have an, a remarkable event, which is the approval of the apparitions, the mystical experiences in Akita, Japan. So before 1984, Bishop John Ito, the bishop in the Diocese of Japan, uh, gives an approval also after consultation with the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith. See how the Congregation has indeed modified its position. Now why is Akita relevant? Because it's a statue, it's a, it's a wooden carved statue of the Lady of All Nations from Amsterdam that begins to mysteriously give uh, messages to the visionary. Uh, in fact, truth be known, uh, the visionary was taught the prayer, the first part of the prayer of the Lady of All Nations, uh, in those uh, events in Akita, and that statue of the Lady of All Nations would then weep 101 times, and that would uh, undergo medical testing at the University of Akita, all of which led Bishop Ito to go and again speak to Cardinal Ratzinger about his intention to make a positive declaration regarding the uh, mystical events at Akita, which is intrinsically related to Amsterdam. So these are all indications of a change that allow public veneration. Since 1996, in fact, there have been international prayer days in Amsterdam and also in Germany, where you have had curial cardinals, that's cardinals from the Vatican, come and participate in public devotion to the Lady of All Nations. Uh, Cardinal Stickler from Austria, uh, Cardinal Dowd uh, from Lebanon. And in the Amsterdam Apparition Prayer Days in Cologne, Germany, you had the very close friend of Pope Benedict XVI Emeritus, Cardinal Meissner. Uh, and so, in fact, public veneration has happened since 90, 1996, not just with the faithful, but with major members of the hierarchy. So this all indicates the development since 1974. Also important to note that the non constat, and I say again uh, to be clear, which, which was never a prohibition, it was never a constat de non, hence the fake news, the non constat of the 1974 position has also experienced development because in 2002, the local bishop, uh, Bishop Punt, made a declaration of a constat where he states that after uh, getting uh, advice from theologians and psychologists, uh, he discerned that these were in essence of a supernatural origin. 
And that's another development since the 1974 declaration. So in point of fact, both in terms of public devotion and in terms of going from a, a non constat to constat at the local level, those are major developments in the apparitions of the Lady of All Nations. And again, just for your best possible understanding of how the church does this, when a local bishop makes a discernment and a decision, the Vatican can do one of three things. One is the Vatican can officially confirm the decision of the local bishop. That, in fact, uh, happens rarely, uh, but it is a possibility. For example, the apparitions in Cabello received that from Rwanda. More often than not, it does not do that, but that's one possibility. The second possibility is that the Vatican can always overturn uh, a decision of a local bishop. This has happened even more rarely, and that would only happen after a new intensive study of the uh, commission report and, and the decision of the bishop. The, the Vatican is always more disposed to accepting the, the decision of the local bishop. Uh, in this case, that would demand an intensive reinvestigation of both Amsterdam and Akita, because those are both uh, constat de supernaturalitate concluded by the local bishops. Or the third possibility of what the Vatican can do is the Vatican can leave it alone. That whatever the local bishop has discerned at the local level, the Vatican can leave that. Now, that in fact is what has happened for the last 18 years in Amsterdam and the last 36 years in Akita, Japan. So, uh, these are not unusual circumstances in terms of uh, a process regarding private revelation. Okay, so that's the fake news 1974 clarification. Let's go to uh, a, a very recent uh, article by an American blogger where the general sense of the message is that the Amsterdam apparitions are, quote, controversial. Now, of course, there's great liberty in terms of individual opinion regarding a series of apparitions. And as you know, the church doesn't even mandate that you accept a constat de supernaturalitate apparition. But I, I, would, I have to comment on the, the overall perspective of the apparitions of the Lady of All Nations in Amsterdam as, quote, controversial. How does the church examine authenticity? Well, three major categories. Number one, is the message sound? Is the message according to the faith and moral teams of the church? Number two, uh, is the phenomena experienced, uh, the, the nature of the apparition, the nature of the ecstasy, uh, is that within the mystical tradition of the church? And number three, does it give forward great spiritual fruits? Well, if you if you examine the Lady of All Nations apparitions according to those three fruits, I think you come out with very, very high marks. There are no doctrinal errors in the message. The phenomena follows the mystical phenomena within the mystical tradition of the church. And the prayer, for example, the prayer of the Lady of All Nations has received over 50 imprimaturs by cardinals and bishops worldwide and has been prayed worldwide for decades. So, in that dimension, uh, it, it very soundly manifests indications of authenticity. But I would also say this, when prophetic elements in the message come true, that of course helps to discern the authenticity. And again, we've already mentioned the fact that in another church-approved apparition at the local level, Akita, Japan, that it's coming forth from a statue of the Lady of All Nations. I mean, could you conceive that heaven would use a, a statue from a false apparition site to affect a new, positive, authentic, supernatural apparition? It would be nonsensical. So that's why Akita and Amsterdam very much stand or fall together, and I believe they should well stand together as their bishops have designated them as constat apparitions. What else would give indication of the authenticity of Amsterdam? We've got a series of prophecies, and we, we don't have time to go through all of them. I just want to highlight a few of them, which testify to the supernatural character of these apparitions. For example, in 1945, the messages prophesy the reinstatement of the country of Israel. 
And that would happen three years later. In 1945, it's prophesied that there'd be a red flag flying over China and great bloodshed. Well, Mao Zedong and the communist takeover of China in 1949. The visionary then sees a line drawn through Korea and a prophecy, and this is in 1949, and the prophecy that there would be future danger for the world based on what would take place. And in fact, you then have the Korean Civil War and the emergence of North Korea with its ongoing danger for the United States. The messages prophesied the Second Vatican Council, a man on the moon. And at one point where the visionary herself was wondering, how do I know if these things are true? Our Lady in January of 1958 gave her the specific date of the death of the Pope, Pius XII, that would happen in October. The visionary took the date, wrote it down, just gave it to her spiritual director, and that was it. And indeed, Pius XII died on that very date. So these are all indications that this cannot come from a middle-aged woman in Amsterdam on her own. A former worker for our CIA, a professor said that the prophecies that have come true from the apparitions of Lady of All Nations uh, were more manifesting a, a, a truth than the combined information of the US CIA and the Russian KGB. In other words, this little woman had no way of knowing these things that the two greatest intelligent uh, companies, agencies of the two world powers at the time didn't know. So these are all indications. And, and again, there's more prophecies of uh, economic strife uh, taking place, of a great spiraling in faith, uh, and, and on and on. So I find it somewhat interesting that even this American blogger, whose site is, is, is very well known for a lot of, let's say, uh, controversial subjects, and certainly prophesi prophecies of uh, upcoming challenges and, and, and disasters and more, uh, that that would, in some sense, uh, fulfill or, 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 or qualify as, quote, controversial. Uh, so I, I'm not sure that that's a fair overall estimate of an apparition, except that apparitions by their nature are calling us prophetically to something new, something important, something potentially dangerous. The blogger made some reference about uh, an illusion in Amsterdam about a, a, a new flood, a purification by water, saying, well, that's not exactly the Genesis promise. Well, go to Aki to Japan and you'll get a much stronger apparition from another church approved apparition saying that indeed there will be uh, a new deluge because of the sins of humanity. These are the realities of our time. Finally, let me just make reference that in a few of these articles, there's been a reference of a, of a certain disappointment for people who are praying and working for the fifth Marian dogma. I have to say it, it's absolutely the opposite. Uh, this new awareness, which these articles, even sadly the fake news, has brought to these messages of the Lady of All Nations, to the over century process, uh, over 100 years of movement in the church to crown Our Lady with a dogma, a, a solemn proclamation that she's the spiritual mother of all peoples, which has been only confirmed, not initiated, but confirmed in the apparitions of Lady of All Nations and also by extension in these apparitions of Akita. That's only confirming that heaven wants this and heaven wants it now. So there was some reference that, well, but you know, uh, Pope Francis made some reference that Mary would not call herself co-redemptrix. Well, indeed, he's absolutely right. She doesn't call herself co-redemptrix in scripture. That was the, the, the proper context of his, uh, his comments, uh, no more than uh, he, the Holy Father, would have called himself Holy Father before his uh, election to the papacy. Uh, it's not a question of what one calls themselves, it's a question of what God calls them to. And clearly, Our Lady was called to be, as St. John Paul II tells us on seven occasions, she was called to be the co-redemptrix, meaning that she was called to uniquely work with and under Jesus for the redemption of the world. 
Keep in mind, my friends, even our present Holy Father, who has a great love of Our Lady, made a 180 degree change regarding the Medjugorje apparitions, originally saying Mary's not a postman, then leading to the first time in history that official pilgrimages have been allowed to an apparition site, which has not yet been declared constat. Medjugorje is still non constat as the Amsterdam apparitions are, uh, according to the 74 statement, but of course the constat was given in 2002. So we continue in peace, we continue in hope, and we continue in obedience. I believe the dogma of Mary as the co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate, in whatever formulation is ultimately dictated by Our Lady and Our Holy Father, this will happen. And when it happens, tremendous graces will be released upon the world, and we need those graces now. So I ask you to continue to pray for the proclamation of the fifth Marian dogma, continue to have generous devotion to the Lady of All Nations as nothing new has taken place in that category. Thanks so much for being with us during this Mary Live special regarding clarifications on the Lady of All Nations. And let's continue in faith and diligent prayer, trusting in the promise of Fatima. In the end, my Immaculate Heart will triumph, Our Lady says, and a period of peace will be granted to the world. Thanks, and God bless you.